Welcome to Miami, Florida. It is your boy, Mr. Bucket List, and I am back. And whoo, what an experience. So starting off on this trip, being that I haven't been to the Port of Miami since 2014, this time around, instead of parking directly in front of the cruise ship, I actually ended up parking about close to a mile away from the cruise ship because I parked in garage G when I should have parked in garage B. So that kind of sucked. But the weird thing was, when I was walking almost that half a mile to a mile trip, I noticed something. I didn't see any other cars passing by me, and I saw plenty of cruise terminals, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, I passed through them all, none of them looked busy, I just didn't see anybody. And I was like, what is going on? This is a Friday afternoon, this is cruise time. And then I, it hit me, this cruise might be perfect. And well, we'll get to that. Now, once I actually did find my terminal, I did see a couple of people, but it wasn't crowded like it usually is. I mean, usually you see groups and hundreds of people all rushing to get in line and all that stuff, and it just was not happening. And even when I got inside the terminal, I mean, there was no lines, there was nobody sitting down. I couldn't record going through security, but even security, it was just me, and I'm like, am I going through the VIP line? What is happening here? I just was so confused about what was going on. And then it really just, it made sense to me. I'm like, this is really gonna be one of those empty cruise ships that people keep talking about. And at least for this vacation, this is exactly what I was looking for. Now for everyone that's watching, this is actually my fourth cruise and my first time with MSC. So I literally had no idea what to think. This is the cheapest cruise I've ever been on. This is the shortest cruise I've ever been on. And I've saw nothing but complaints and bad reviews about the food, the service. I was just extremely worried. And literally walking on the gangway with no type of music or celebration, nothing like that. I was like, wow, what am I getting myself into? And then I saw this. This ship is beautiful. Then after being in all of the actual ship, the first thing I did was I went to my cruise car to go ahead and load it up with some cash because I heard it gets really busy. Of course, no one was there, so it was a nice, quick and easy process. And then I decided to go ahead and head to the pool deck, so I figured that's where everybody would be. And this is what I saw. I literally thought this was a prank going on. I'm like, you cannot be serious. Like, where is everybody? It just, it really blew my mind about what I was seeing here. So after not seeing anybody around the pool deck, I figured the main place everybody must be is the buffet. The one place I always tell people not to go to on the first day of the cruise because it's gonna be packed. I figured somebody had to be in there. And yeah, I saw about five people. So this is what I ended up getting. It was pretty unique. It wasn't bad, it was just a weird mixture of food. Uh, to be honest, I really can't say what it was besides the burger and fries and I'm assuming the potato salad, but everything else is just some type of meat. It wasn't bad. 
Now, another very surprising thing was, literally, as soon as I sat down at the buffet, and this was maybe about an hour after getting on the ship, they said your rooms are already ready and good to go, and usually it takes a lot longer than that, so I was really surprised and really happy about that. So I went to check it out. And this room was amazing. And this is literally my first balcony since my first cruise back in 2014. Now, after just chilling on the balcony and just realizing that I got this room and this entire cruise for a little bit over $300, I was just still just honestly just blown away. And another cool thing that happened while I was in my room was the actual mustard drill came on. It was a lot different. You literally just watch a little TV and then you go and scan your card somewhere and that's it. None of that sitting around and watching the demonstration, all that crazy stuff. It doesn't happen on this ship. It doesn't happen because of COVID. And it was really, really nice. So after watching the mustard drill on the TV, I figured I might as well head back up to the pool deck to go to the sail away party, or if you can call it that. And I will be honest, that is where the nonsense started. So for those who are familiar with my channel and my last cruise in particular, you all seem to love my stories about the spa and about my friend Miss Lady and my other friend I met on the excursions. You all seem to enjoy that type of stuff even though it kind of was a headache for me. And I have good and bad news for you. So yes, there was a very similar situation that happened on this cruise repeatedly with the same individual. And with that said, I thought about how I can bring this on this channel without just, I just, I tried so many different ways. And the unfortunate part is there is no way I can actually bring them on this channel without potentially getting anybody in trouble. Let's just say this. I don't want anybody to get fired. I don't want to get blacklisted from MSC. I really enjoyed the cruise. So take it as what you will. But unfortunately, I just there's no story I can tell this time in that regards. But with that said, it was pretty cool to be able to get in the pool on day one on the sail away party and literally kind of swim on the Port of Miami in the pool. I just, I've never done that before. Usually I'm in the background because there's so many people trying to get in the pool and this and that, and that just didn't happen this time around. Speaking of the Port of Miami, so the sail away party was actually pretty cool. I mean, there wasn't many people. Everyone was just taking selfies, including myself. Um, but as far as the actual sail away, it was nice. It was calm. I could actually hear and see things, get beautiful shots. And then I was so jealous because there was some individual that lived in one of the high rises in Miami and he had a drone and he kept flying around the ship and you all know I have my little drone as well and I'll just, of course you can't bring a, a drone on the cruise ship so I was really really jealous but either way the sail away in general is just really nice, really relaxing. And then it was time for dinner. Oh dinner. So as far as my first meal, I will say I was not impressed. Um, the appetizer was good. The main entree itself, it was like lamb or something like that. It was okay. But I had this tomato and it had some stuff in it. And it was literally the nastiest thing I've ever tasted. Like I literally almost threw up right then and there. It was so disgusting. So it kind of gave me a bad taste as far as how the food was going to be. But thankfully that was the worst meal I had on the entire trip. Everything else was great. And the cool thing was, because the ship was so empty, they had basically the same type of flexible dining that NCL had. So I didn't have to worry about getting there too early, getting there too late. They just said, come whenever. So after eating dinner in that actually really nice restaurant, um, the next thing I did was try to go and see the welcoming show. I didn't realize it wasn't a welcoming show. It was more like a, a parlor trick magic type show. So I didn't stay for all of it. Um, but either way, it was, it, was, it was decent. It was just really strange how things were happening. But... It kind of set the mood. I figured this is going to be a European cruise. So a lot of stuff I'm used to is just not going to be the same here. And I was okay with that. So after leaving that parlor trick show, the last thing I actually had planned was to head to something called the White Night Party. Uh, now, usually when they have it on NCL, it's usually one of the last things they do right before you disembark. And I always seem to miss it because I'm so tired, but this time, since it was the first thing on for the first night, I was like, I have to make it. So I got my little white clothes on, I went out there, and then I realized, hey, this is go isn't going to be really big of a party because there's only but so many people on this ship. And sure enough, when I got there, people are just kind of sitting around and drinking. It just, it was almost a snooze fest, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I got to wake up early tomorrow anyway, so it's not a big deal. At least I came and checked it out. And then it was finally time to head back and get ready for day number two. Day 
day two. Now, before I get started about this day, there is one important thing I did forget to mention. The cruise director said on a ship that's made for 8,000 people, we had less than 800. So, I mean, that's the reason why I did not see that many people. And that to me was just amazing. Now, being that I had this balcony, of course, I had to go ahead and have breakfast on the balcony with the beautiful ocean. It was just an amazing time to be out there. Now, even though the balcony was great and my food was good for breakfast, I was on edge because this was the first time potentially I could actually go to a private island out of four cruises because every other time it always gets canceled by weather. And what do you know? Man, your boy was pissed. I am not going to lie. I was so mad. So after realizing that they weren't going to let anybody off the boat because of the actual weather, I just I had to rearrange my day and make it one of the get to know the ship days. Just kind of like last time and like every other cruise I've been on when it comes to these private islands. But hold up. As soon as I got to my room to go ahead and change my clothes and get my camera equipment, my tripod and all that stuff, there was a little noise in the announcement. She basically said, look, we're letting you all get in the island, do whatever you want. The weather's calming down. The weather should be done and gone in about five minutes, so enjoy it. It was such a great sound to hear. Literally music to my ears. And as a reminder, welcome to internet connection. When you do head short, please make sure that you just... And yeah, walking off the boat, it wasn't that pleasant. But either way, I was still happy to be on the island. This literally was our only stop that we had for the entire cruise. Now, with a combination of the bad weather and also the ship actually only running about 10% for the guest capacity, I knew this actual private island was just going to feel like a ghost town. And it definitely did. Now, I cannot stress enough, out of everything I've done this year, between going to theme parks and going to the mountains and going dog sled at snowmobile, literally, I've, everything I've done has been adrenaline laced and it's been crazy. And I just, I really wanted this vacation to be nothing but pure relaxation. And that's exactly what I got. Now, with that said, I actually did have a couple of excursions planned out for this trip. The first one was going to the tallest lighthouse in the Bahamas that's on this private island. So you pretty much walk up to the top and walk back down. It was cheap, it was quick. But the cool thing was, since it was just me, it was a private tour basically of the lighthouse, the tallest lighthouse in the Bahamas. And the crazy thing was, when we started walking up, even though the weather was horrible, the more and more we walked up, the better and better the weather got. And so basically, once we got to the very top, it was like this ray of sunlight on top of this cruise ship and the beach. It was just beautiful to see. And my tour guide, she was actually really cool too. So after doing that tour, the next thing I did was I did go ahead and secure a spot on the beach, even though it really wasn't hard to do. And then I went and got into the water. Um, now the water itself, this is a Bahamas, so I mean the water was nice and warm and clean and blue. And then it had amazing views of both the lighthouse, the cruise ship, and just everything around. It's a beautiful sight. And once again, nobody was in the water. It was like maybe me and two other people. Being that it was so empty, I really didn't know what to do myself. So basically I just kept kind of getting out the water, getting drinks and going back in the water. But the crazy thing was the second time I got into the water, the clouds started coming back a little bit. And then I saw a lot of people looking in one direction. And then when I turned around, I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's a tornado forming. And so this is that experience right here. Well, we actually have a tornado forming. That is, wow. It, I know, it, it, it keeps dropping, it's definitely forming. That's crazy. That's that storm from earlier today. That's, so, that's storm from earlier so, you all, this is a tornado that's literally forming, right? Wow, that is nuts. Well, my man even catching on this camera. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's definitely forming. So you all, I just want to let you know the movies lied to you. When black people see Danger 2, they just talk about it and record. No different than white people. So after watching that tornado almost touch down, the next thing I want to do was go ahead and try out the food because I heard the food on the island is some of the best on the trip. And it definitely, it was. I definitely agree. It was really good um, Jamaican style food. They cooked it really well. The meat on the chicken was so tender. Everything was just really, really good. Like I wish I could eat there the entire trip because that's how good it was. And everyone was super friendly. I mean, I was so nervous about that previous experience. I was like, I don't know who to talk to anymore. But everybody was really, really nice, really cool. 
Now the weird thing about this excursion and this actual island in general was that we were actually going to be there overnight. So we can kind of come and go as we please instead of just having a rush like a normal port. So I really didn't know what to do. I had a jet ski excursion I was planned, but I also wanted to go back to the ship and do things as well. So I actually did a mixture of both. Um, I kind of packed everything up. I went back to the ship. I changed and then I went and did some activities on the ship. Here's a little montage of that. And I'm not really sure why, but even on the ship, I went back to the buffet just to do it and got a couple little things here and there. Uh, but once again, it was just, I mean, the island was dead, the ship was dead, like nobody was around. It was just, it was so surreal, but it was so nice because I just didn't want to have to deal with nonsense on a real vacation. And I didn't. And oh my God, that water park was so fun. So cool. So I actually had one last excursion to do on the island, but first what I did was I brought a change of clothes with me. So once I got done with that, I can just change while I was on the island. And the excursion itself was nice. Again, it was just me and my tour guide on the jet ski, and he was pretty much was like, you can go and do whatever you want. Just come back at this time. So I was just going crazy, but it was a good time. Really good time. Now, one thing I want to mention before I go into the nighttime is walking around the ship for me was extremely easy. Like on the Norwegian Epic, for example, it was such a hassle, it was so confusing. I, I just, it took me days to figure out what to do on that ship. And then that was a pretty, pretty lengthy cruise compared to this one. And on this ship, I mean, between my room being in the middle of the ship, being on the 10th floor, being not right beside the elevator, but like a couple steps away from it. So I couldn't hear it, but it wasn't far away. And then the elevators themselves, I never ever had to wait for an elevator. And I honestly never shared an elevator with somebody. So, I mean, it was just so many different positive things about my room location and how MSC handled things. Even getting on and off the island, it was just, it was like a two minute process. You just walk through security, boom, you're in, boom, you're out. It was just, it was great, such a good time. So after I put on my touristy clothes and kind of felt like an actual island guy, what I basically did was just kind of walk around the island and just took in the sunset and the views and everything was just so beautiful and so nice i just i really felt like this is what this is what i work hard for this is why i do this because the payoff is just so rewarding And even they went ahead and started bonfires and like so they were just passing out drinks and food and just it was really it felt like paradise on earth like just a beautiful sight to see. But then the night time started to roll in and it was finally time for the lighthouse spectacular. Ocean Key, MSC Marine Ooh. Reserve. And now I want to invite everyone right here, right here, right here, because it's time to party. DJ, bring it up, bring it up. Así que mi gente, los quiero ver a todos. The production values on that show was so good. It really felt like something that like Disney or Universal would do. And then the little party afterwards was really fun as well. Great music, great dance, and just a really good time. It felt like a private beach party, like just in the middle of nowhere, which it basically was. Now, after having an amazing time on that beach and that private island and seeing the lighthouse show and the dancing, the food, everything, it was finally time to head back to the ship. Now, the Broadway show that they actually had was something called Born to Rock, which basically is just like a Broadway show where it goes through different genres of music, basically going from the early 60s all the way up to, I think, either the 80s or 90s. And so I was actually really excited because they had something similar to that um, on NCL and I really liked it. Now, I will say this, the show was enjoyable, it wasn't bad, but it was just really, really strange, and this is what I mean by it, or let me just actually show some of it.
<laughs> just watching it just brings back some good laughs. So, like I said, the show wasn't bad. It was just so strange. It was funny. You would see things like you would hear opera, the Queen, and then you would see like swing dance to Pink Floyd, and you would see salsa to Aretha Franklin, and you would see tap dance to Cardi B. Literally, none of it made any sense, but it was just really good to see. It was just, it was cool to hear those songs. It was just weird how they were being presented. So, like I said, I can't say that it was the best show I've ever seen, but it wasn't the worst because if I had to drink a little bit more, that would have been the best comedy I've ever seen in my life. Like, I'm dead serious. But anyway, after enjoying whatever they call that, it was time for me to go ahead and head back to my room and get ready for the next big day, which is a sea day, and finally my day to get to know the ship. Alright, so I will go ahead and condense day three and four together. I don't want this video to go on too long, so if I'm kind of speeding through things, that's the reason why. Usually, like any cruise, I always go to the very top deck for the sunrise on the, on the very last day. Even if I have a balcony, it's just, I mean, that view up there is just unbeatable. This is no different. And then after that, what I actually did for the first time was I actually went to the, to the main dining room for breakfast. Now, as you all can see, I mean, the staff was just, there was so much more staff compared to guests. It really felt like VIP the entire time. Like, I, I cannot stress it enough. They cared so much about their customers and the way it was just, it was amazing. Like, I really felt like a king the entire time. And then the food itself, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just standard. It looks like something you can get out the buffet, but it was cooked fresh, so it wasn't bad at all. But then after breakfast, it was time to head to my favorite spot on any ship, the spa. Now, I thoroughly enjoyed this spa. I mean, it was so much different than NCL's because it had different areas and different rooms and not just one big pool and a bunch of chairs. It actually had like different, it's just a lot to it. And so let me just kind of go down the list here. So of course you have multiple saunas, but then you also have your salt room. And then after your salt room, you have like this little pool. And the pool, it wasn't deep, but it was like a, just almost like a hot tub in a way. And then right near that, you also had this shower. And the shower was so cool because it was like going through like a car wash. Like it has different layers and like you hit the button and the lights turn colors. It was just really unique and really different. The water was all different temperatures and it was like either hot to cold or cold to hot. And then they also have this room called the snowfall room, which is basically like a, a reverse sauna. Instead it has like snow coming down the ice really strange and then they had this steam room that was like disco flavor and i say people going there to die because i walked in there for two seconds i nearly passed out it was so hot and the lights just made me just really just dizzy i just i can't believe that's on that ship and then they also have of course your, your standard saunas you have lounging chairs that are heated you have these nice, nice little chairs that you sit down in the water and they would like massage your back it was just so much going on like that spa was amazing and ironically, I didn't have one of those crazy conversations, but I did meet this lady. She actually reminded me of like one of my old school teachers, but she kept creeping around and finally she started talking to me. So I talked to her and it was pretty cool. Um, but after the spa, I went to my second favorite part of the ship and I wish I went there earlier called the bamboo pool. So what it basically is, is this huge solarium with different whirlpools and a, like a regular pool and jacuzzis. Adults supposedly only, even though I saw some kids in there, but it was just so nice, so relaxing. I enjoyed every second of it. And again, like I said, there was um, crew members all around, so they really, if you needed a drink or needed anything, they were there to help you out. And then after that, I decided to go ahead and dance it off a little bit. And so when I was walking outside, they had like a little dance exercise class going on. So I recorded a little bit and then I did go ahead and join in. And then it was finally time to go ahead and try lunch. So I went back to the main dining room. I didn't go to the buffet at all besides at the very end of the trip. Um, but for lunch, it was actually really good. So I got this little ceviche thing with just like shrimp and just different little vegetables. It was different, but it was actually pretty good. And then the salad, it was one of the best salads I've ever eaten. Like I literally, I was watching this other lady, I think her name is Cruise Tips TV or something like that. She's here on YouTube, but she kept talking about this salad. And I see why, because this salad was so good. Like I literally I asked for three of them because they were just that good. Um, but I ate the salad. And then I got a um, I got a meatball sandwich. And the reason why is because I'm like, this is an Italian ship. The other Italian food I have had on this ship, including the pizza, was really good. And so the meatball sub was also really well. So all the food and even the dessert, I finished everything. Like I really, really enjoyed my lunch. Not bad at all. And then I'll go ahead and fast forward to dinner. So dinner is the same thing. Um, what I ended up getting was just a couple of different appetizers. I got another salad and then I ended up getting some calamari. And then for the entree, I wanted to go ahead and get some um, actual, again, Italian stuff. So I got the chicken parmesan and I got this little meat skewer and they both are really, really good. 
and even the um, dessert, the dessert was like, I don't know what it was, but it was just really, really good. So I mean, all the food after my first meal was actually pretty good. Like I was really surprised. And then after dinner, it was time to go ahead and catch a couple more shows before it was time to get off the ship. And so this show they had, again, it was just actually opera, like literally just strictly opera. Um, they weren't even speaking English. Like it was a, it was a unique show. I didn't, can't say I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it was, it was better than nothing. So I checked out that show and then they had some dancing with it and they were kind of struggling when they were dancing. So it was pretty funny. And then after that, I headed to the pool deck because they had a 70s night and you all don't know, but I actually had this secret fetish of disco music ever since my cruise on the Norwegian Epic. Like I just love hearing disco music on a cruise ship. I don't know why. And unfortunately the only disco music they played was like slow music. So I just kind of left it for about 15 minutes. But the cool thing was when I went to the silent party where you get to change your own music, they had a disco station and the disco station was the best out of all of them. So I got my disco fix in anyway. And then after going to the silent disco, I did go ahead and walk around the ship some more. I checked out some bars, some of the dance clubs, ended up getting some drinks. I ended up watching a little dumb show again. It was actually really, really good. Uh, now one thing about this dumb show, though, so the first time I tried to watch it, I was so excited, everybody was ready to go. And then this is what happened. I was so mad you all so I literally had to come back later on at night when I didn't want to to watch it again I just can't believe that that girl talked over it like how do you not know your own schedule like that just really just pissed me off so bad but thankfully they had more and more coming and then as far as day four this time I didn't lose my camera so I do have some footage from it but I'll tell you all right now just like getting on the ship getting off the ship the disembarkation it was the quickest I've ever seen on any cruise ship and this is my fourth cruise Literally, to get on and get off the boat, off the ship, it took no more than 10 minutes. And then, I mean, just for comparison, I mean, trying to get off the Norwegian Epic, it took about two and a half hours. So, A plus for that all the way for MSC. They had their stuff in line. But now it's time to go ahead and recap. So for the Mr. Bucketless family on this channel, you all know that I take vacations all the time. I mean, honestly, just for the year of 2020 alone, I have traveled at least one week out of each month of 2021 and sometimes twice and three times in the month. So I mean, and these are vacations where I'm leaving the state, I'm leaving, sometimes leaving the country. I'm going all around the world because I just really enjoy traveling, especially solo traveling. So when this cruise happened, it just kind of blew me away because this was a cruise I was looking for to be relaxed, to actually consider myself on vacation. All those other activities I do, it takes so much planning and time and dedication and flights back and forth, hotels, money, it just takes so much to it. And when you go on a cruise, I mean, once you're there, that's pretty much it. You can do whatever you want. And that's exactly what happened during this cruise. Now, ironically, I put this on my social media and a couple people end up sharing it. So a lot of people end up seeing it. And I had people that literally were my mother's age or had children my age. And they were talking about, oh, that cruise looks boring. It should have been turned up, this and that. And I just, it's hilarious to me because they have no idea how much I actually travel or sometimes I just don't want that nonsense. And that's exactly what this cruise is for. And it definitely delivered. So before I depart, there's one last thing I want to leave you all with. Never ever miss the opportunity to try something new. You all know I usually do NCL. This is my first time doing MSC. And between the price, the length, the room, the actual itinerary, what was offered, there's not much more I could ask for on this cruise. And with that said, this cruise is everything I wanted. Yes!